Today I have a woven blouse to share with you. It has a really nice square neckline, different to typical necklines. You can opt to put a little collar in between this neckline. Very nice. Stay with me to see all the details. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I have a woven garment to share with you today. I made this blouse back in December when I was at my parents. It was the pattern that won the votes on my Patreon page. The orchid tea there every month get a choice of three patterns that they can vote for and I do a full sew along there. So what you'll see today in the sewing will be a summary of that. What I'm talking about is Aisling blouse from Jennifer Lauren and this is the first time I try one of her patterns so I was really excited. I purchased this pattern along with others in the Black Friday sales back in late November so I was very excited to sew this one. The Aisling blouse has like a sister pattern. It, they actually do sell it in a bundle if you wanna get both for a bit less. And it's the Asteria dress. So what is the same is basically the neckline options, the way that the collar is, the facing, that is the same look for the dress. What is different though is that it's a fitted bodice and then you have a skirt with box pleats. But if you make the blouse and you like the style of the neckline and you get the technique down, then it would be really, really easy to go ahead and make the dress. I hope I can get around to sewing that pattern also because it's also one of the ones I purchased for Black Friday. So I'm excited about that one because if I like this one, I'm gonna like that one as well. I think the feature that mostly stands out here when you look at it quickly is the square neckline, which is something that is different, that I really enjoy, that is not very easy to find in patterns. It's not like you see a lot of patterns that have this type of neckline. And there's also a collar in there. So a lot of the features in this blouse are really optional. You can make it as simple as you want or as complex as you want. There is a button down feature, but you can also cut it on the fold. So so many things that you can mix and match here. You can make a really simple one that has no collar where you cut the front on the fold and you have a square neckline, right? Or you can add another step, still cut that front on the fold, but put the collar in there. And then step number three, if you're looking for more sewing details, would be to add the button down feature with the collar. And then of course you can sew the button down feature without the collar. So so many things that you can do with this pattern. I chose the version of the pattern that had the most details, of course, because when I'm doing a sew along on Patreon, I want it to be as rich as it can be with sewing techniques. And, you know, I want there to be a lot to see. So that is usually how I choose my projects for Patreon. If there are several versions, I'll probably pick the one that has the most details. And there is a long sleeve, which is wider at the bottom. And because it's wider, it's easy to fold up and create a casing at the bottom where you insert a narrow elastic, and that gives you that gathered look at the wrist. The Aisling is for woven fabrics. I think the lightweight fabrics would work the best. You can see in the little diagram I've put on the screen that you have different options and one group of fabrics will give you a more structured look and the other group of fabrics will give you a more softer flowy look. There's nothing in this design that requires a sort of light drapey fabric like gathers or flounces so if you wanted to make it out of a more structured fabric you could it's your choice and if you are new to sewing I think it would be easier for you to work with the more structured fabrics cotton lawn cotton voile chambray shirting maybe a quilting cotton I think would be too stiff for it I would not want to make this out of a quilting cotton my choice is usually more towards the flowier softer fabrics like rayon or crepe just because of the way that type of fabric feels on the skin really soft really light so even though the design doesn't need you to have a fabric that drapes nicely I tend to pick those fabrics rather than the structured ones you do need some lightweight non-stretch interfacing because the collar does need to be interfaced and the facing pieces. This particular pattern comes from sizes 6 to 24. Now there are newer patterns that have a broader size range. This one is not so new, it's not so old either. So this one will go up to a 56 inch hip. There are bust cup sizes here but different to other patterns these are not sewing bust cup sizes. So most patterns that offer cup size options use the sewing bust cup size which is the difference between your high bust and your full bust. So when I was looking at the instructions, I got a little bit confused because in this case, we're using bra cup sizes, which is a different concept. And it takes into account the measurement of the full bust and the under bust. So you can see there that you'll find this type of chart in the pattern. You just need to see what the difference you have with your measurements. Use a well-fitting bra, the one that you're gonna wear all the time to take your measurements and see what bra cup size you are. I wouldn't really just look at the bra cup size you use and choose 
the size right here because it might be really different brands and countries they use different sizing systems so I wouldn't just blindly say yeah I use a d-cup bra I'll just sew the d-cup you know I, I wouldn't do that I would actually take the measurements and make sure that you're doing everything correctly so I went ahead and looked at the chart carefully was really careful taking my measurements and for the way that this designer makes her patterns I end up being a d-cup I was very confident that the fit was going to be okay <laughs> So I didn't make a muslin, it's a semi-relaxed fit, it'll be a nice fit here on the top, on the chest and for shaping on the side you have a bust out, so that's great but then once you get to the waist you have plenty of space and the space at the hips is enough so it's not really boxy either but it's not a really tight fitting blouse which is really nice it'll hit the mid hip, at least it does for my height I think the positive ease drafted into this pattern is really appropriate for the style. At the bust you have about two and three eighths of an inch of ease. Going down at the waist because the shape is more straight you have about 10 inches of ease at the waist. And then at the hips about four and three eighths. So I was really happy with those measurements. I didn't really think I needed to make other sizes than what my body measurements showed me on the chart right there. The size I chose for myself was a size 18. I didn't need to blend any sizes for my bust or hips, you know, my measurements fit into one size. So that was pretty easy, but I knew I had to check the position of that dart. 99.9% .9 of the times I need to lower that to match my bust height. So all I did was lower it by an inch, that is what I needed, and I was really happy that it was going to be correctly placed for my body. I had very limited fabric and I quickly realized after playing with the layout in about a thousand ways that the sleeve being long as it was, was not going to fit. The facing pieces are quite large, they take up quite a lot of space and the sleeve piece is also quite large, it's all wide at the bottom because it gathers in at the wrist. So all I did was cut my sleeve shorter, calculated it was going to end up right at my elbow. It's not that I'm losing width in this area because the sleeve is super wide. So all I did was just make casing up here, put the elastic there same thing it's just that it's a shorter sleeve and i can get a lot of use out of a short sleeve blouse anyway so i wasn't sad about it you know if my pattern pieces had to fit i knew one thing i could easily change was the length of the sleeve i think the instructions and the diagrams were very very clear very well made pattern the only asterisk i put here and as a item i did not enjoy and it had to do with the whole project actually, I didn't enjoy this for the whole thing, was the seam allowance. And I'm very against 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I know the big four companies, McCall, Simplicity, all those, they'll use that type of seam allowance. And whenever I've sewn those patterns, I really, really dislike it. I think it's harder to be accurate. It's a waste of fabric. You know, when you're trying to place your pattern pieces and they fit just next to each other, you know, I think seam allowance can make a difference. And then when you're sewing, you end up needing to trim so much away. With 5 eighths of an inch, I feel like I need to really concentrate the hardest to keep a really neat seam, to keep it accurate, because I feel like the fabric just wants to go narrower and it just wants to be half an inch or 3 eighths of an inch. So it's always a seam allowance I don't enjoy. And just because the seam allowance is a huge part of the process when you're sewing, that is the only reason I enjoyed the process of this blouse a little bit less. Although I love the techniques and the style and everything in the pattern, just the seam allowance made it that little bit uh, for me, you know? I'd love it if it was just a smaller seam allowance. I'm sharing with you today the pattern pieces, the interfacing, general sewing construction, shoulder seams, trimming seam allowances, but I'm mainly focusing on this collar, how to assemble this collar, how to prepare the facings and how to put this collar and the facing together so that the collar comes right out of that corner of the square neckline. Really fun, I really enjoyed it. So let's hop in and see up close and so personal. Again, I'm block fusing like always to cut the collar and the facing pieces. This is the collar, it's quite big and you cut two of them, one is interfaced, one isn't. I've got the non-interfaced one folded over there, I don't want to even breathe around it so it won't deform. But as you can see, I've got a piece of fabric that fits both of these. Most patterns give you half of the piece that you cut on the fold, I just like to extend them and just create one piece so I can cut in a single layer and avoid the fold, I think I can get it more precise that way. This is the front facing and I've already cut it 
out I blocked views that as well my piece of fabric was a little bit bigger than the pattern piece to cut it out so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these out here are the pattern pieces for my Aisling blouse they aren't that many pieces I have chosen the version of this blouse with the most details you can make a much more simple version this is the back it's cut on the fold this is the back facing it's already been interfaced I block fused that you can see the edge of my back neckline also has a strip of interfacing to stabilize that will in the end replace stay stitching and will just give that neckline a bit of stability there will be a facing and a collar weighing that down so I thought it was a good idea to strengthen that area the same with the front piece here I'm doing the version with the button down there is another cut line narrower where you can just cut it on the fold and then it's easier I have also stabilized the edge of the neckline there with a little bit of interfacing and here are the front facing pieces two of them you can see they match the shape right there here are the two color pieces that are going to be sandwiched between the neckline and the facings one is interfaced that's the one you're going to see on the outside and the one that's going to be at the bottom is not interfaced that's the shape right there over here I have a sleeve that I made shorter just to make the pattern fit into my fabric. In regards to sewing it will be all the same, it's just that it's a little bit shorter. The first steps are really simple, we are going to sew shoulder seams for the blouse and for the facings. I've already got them pinned together. Now because 5 8 is quite a lot of space, it's really easy to just go and search now after sewing the seam. Here it's really easy to sew with a serger and just trim off a little bit away. I think it's way too much bulk to leave inside the garment everywhere. As I serge, I'm trimming away and I'm left with that amount, which is about 3 8 I think it's more acceptable. That's why I wish it was just just 3 8 and not 5 8 and I'll be doing the same for the shoulder seams of the actual blouse. Another thing I'm going to be doing now that I'm at the serger is serging the outside edges of the facing. Just leave them ready for later. I'm not going to be folding this in like that. I think it's too bulky. A nice serged edge is very acceptable as always. Careful to open up these seams as I serge around this rounded edge. The other two collar pieces they are quite large one is interfaced one isn't I've got the non-interfaced one there right sides up and then I'm just going to take the interfaced one and place it on top and then what we need to sew is from this edge the inner edge out to the corner pivot and then go all the way around this outer edge pivot again there and there 5 8 seam allowance again I wish this was a smaller seam allowance for these curved areas it's so hard to sew with 5 8 Okay, on this other side you can see the seam. I'm going to be trimming that off. I can't leave that all in there. I'll be trimming it down to half. So half of that, it'll be less than 3 8 Around this curved edge here, I'm going to take a few notches just to get rid of some bulk. When this has been flipped out, I don't want that bulk there. You won't see the outline of these notches. What you'll see is a really smooth curve with no puckers on the inside from the seam allowance. So I'll just take my time and notch it all the way around this area. Okay, so that was fun. And now we can turn it right sides out. Now I'm going to fold this towards the non-interface collar onto itself. You can see that intersection of seams. You know that this is how I like to do my points you've seen me sew all my points <laughs> I just fold it onto itself hold it there and flip it and I'll get a really nice point without using any tools or snipping away into the seam allowance that makes that area weaker I can just see a hole coming down the line so I just don't do that see it's always a very nice point now when you flip this over we can go and give it a press if you want to and then the pattern says that we can top stitch like this all around the edge I personally don't find top stitching pretty especially on rayon. I think linen is good for top stitching. I would rather understitch in this case so that I have a clean edge. So what I'm going to do is just push the seam allowance underneath the non-interface collar. When you look at it from this side, interface side will stay extended and the seam allowance coming towards the non-interface collar and I'm going to sew on all around this curved edge. That way when I press it, the seam will roll to the back like that a little bit. It'll have a really clean edge without the seam showing. I won't be able to get all the way up to the point but as far as I can get it, put a pin there to help me. See my allowance is right under here. I have the non-interface collar on the right hand and the interface collar on the left. Okay, there you can see the understitching that's coming towards the non-interface collar. So when I press this, I'm going to have the neatest edge right there on the collar, 
but the seam won't be seen it'll be slightly away from the edge you can see look how nice this collar looks after it's been pressed it's super flat the points are very nice and neat under here the under stitching helped for sure here are the shoulder seams and this is the neckline right sides up so now we take our collar and place the underside of the collar, the one that's not interfaced, where I have under stitching. That goes right sides together with the neckline, and the interface side of the collar will go on top. So now I have to align these perfectly, center backs align them, and then you'll see a little notch here close to the edge of the collar. That notch needs to match at that corner, then there'll be a bit of collar left over. But once we've sewn it with the correct seam allowance, when the facing goes on, then this will come right out of the corner there. Okay, here I'm at the sewing table and I've pinned my collar onto the neckline. You can see that little yellow notch is right at that corner. Now imagine the facing on top here when we sew it here and there. The pivot point is going to be right there at the edge. So the edge of this collar is going to come right out of the corner of the square neckline. That is the point of leaving that little bit extra there and it's marked on the pattern piece. So then we go along the neckline, center back. I had marked it right there and here we have the other side. I'm going to hand baste this onto there so I can get rid of those pins. Once I've got that hand basted in, I'm going to put the facing on top. Okay, now that I have that basted on, I can take my facings, they have the same shape and I'm placing the facing right sides together with the collar. So I have facing, collar, neckline. The facing is touching the interface side of the collar, the non-interface side of the collar is touching the neckline right there. And now I'll just go ahead and match these shoulder seams from the facing with these shoulder seams all along this area where there's the corner for the square neckline along there and all the way down the center front on both sides. Everything should match, that's why I've blocked fused, the facing should have the same length, the same everything. And I'll take my time and I'll be also hand basting this so that I can sew pin free. Okay, here is one of the sides, it's all hand basted all the way down. And if you have seen me sew before, you know I like to do this little seam that closes the bottom of the facing. So I've got it pinned there. I'm just going to use a half inch hem allowance for this blouse, so it's quite close to the edge. I didn't think I needed to trim anything away at this point. So I'm going to start there, then go up, pivot here, keep going and right here, if you can see I have a red dot, that is my pivot point and I can feel exactly where the edge of the collar is. So that is exactly where I want to pivot and it's exactly at the place where it's supposed to be, at the intersection of this seam allowance and that seam allowance at 5 8 It'll be one continuous seam, pretty long one and if you wanted to make the button down feature with a square neckline and without the collar it would be one less step to do and it would still look really pretty i hope i can get to that eventually it would be the exact same thing just putting the facing straight on instead of having the collar sandwiched in between i hope you can see the red dots right there I'm gonna trim this down. This is just way too much bulk to have inside, down the center front, along the neckline, everywhere. Trim it down. In this area where the collar is sandwiched in between, there's quite a few layers. Could get pretty bulky here. At the neckline where we have the curved areas on the back area, I'm gonna be doing some snips. Here where we have these corners, I'm also going to snip into there. Now we have to flip this. I'm going to fold these towards the interface side, towards the facing, onto themselves and just flip it here. And at the bottom I'll be doing the same thing over here, fold towards the interface side right here. So that's how the bottom will be finished. This is still raw, I still haven't surged this. I'll leave that to the end when I've done the side seams. That doesn't really need to happen right now. All this is done here. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then I'm gonna understitch everything. As much as I can, I really can't understitch into these corners, but I can get pretty close here so that from the outside, everything's gonna be clean and the seam's gonna to roll towards the inside. I'll have the facing on my right hand, seam allowance towards that side. And I'll be doing that all along the neckline pushing the collar out of the way but I'll show you that in a second now here you can see there's a corner and you can see the collar coming right out of that corner there that is what is supposed to happen so all the precautions worked and now I'm gonna start 
I'm the stitching here as well in this place and then do my best and go all the way around keeping the collar out of the way. I'm not going to be doing anything with the collar. Okay, remember the collar is out of the way. It's uh, quite a few layers right here but this is lightweight fabric. Always touch, make sure the seam allowance is under the facing. all my facings and just for a matter of comfort I am going to hand baste just the back facing down and top stitch it I'd rather just baste it while it's nice and flat here on the table hold it down really neatly and just top stitch it just from shoulder seam to shoulder seam here I'm just sewing this facing down I'm guiding myself on the inner edge of the surged area there and that's how I'm going to get a nice neat look from the outside here is my aisling blouse it's a really nice print I love the navy back you know, it's one of my favorite types of fabric. When I see anything navy with print, I go straight there to see if I like the print. And I love these colors. I think they're really, really classic and subdued, like a beige and a light tan color. The collar comes right out of that corner of the square neckline. And here we have a button down feature. Now, this neckline is wide enough for you to be able to pull it over your head just fine. And there is enough ease at the bust, the waist and the hips where you could just pull this on. So I didn't make buttonholes, I just sewed the buttons right through. I was at my mom's house and I was using a really simple sewing machine that has that three-step buttonhole function. I will use that if it's extremely important, but I tend to get buttonholes that don't turn out the exact same size. So because I was over there, I just sewed the buttons right through. No buttonholes, no one's gonna know. And I've chosen buttonholes that are transparent and have like a navy edge. I think they're really pretty. I don't really think the button should be a feature here because the print is so nice. The back is simple, it's cut on the fold. And here is my short sleeve. It's got the same casing with an elastic in there. Now I always just take an elastic, wrap it around where the sleeve is gonna hit and give me some positive ease. I never want the elastic to actually be tight around my skin. I find that super uncomfortable. So that's what I did and I still get a nice gathering and it still looks really nice and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. The inside has really nice facings that fit beautifully. I think when you block fuse the facings you're never ever going to have an issue with the facings being smaller or deforming. It's something that I always really enjoy doing and here you can see the facing on the back. I have top stitched that facing down just from shoulder seam to shoulder seam to keep it flat and not moving around but at the front it's loose. It's just open so a nice interface and it has that shape and it goes all the way down there facings have a little shoulder seam that match the shoulder seam of the blouse i press those seams open and serge those separately as well the collar comes from between the facing and the neckline it's a really really fun project let's see it on here is my aisling blouse from jennifer lauren i made a size 18 and this is 100 percent rayon it's very easy to wear and i have unofficially shortened the sleeves but kept the casing with the elastic i do have the button down and collar options here's a closer look at the mid hip length a nice amount of ease at the hips about five inches i sewed the buttons through all the layers this time and here you can see my square neckline the collar comes out of the corner and i really like the depth of this neckline i'm not showing cleavage here is a closer look at my sleeve at elbow length i really enjoy that because i can wear it in summer and this is how the collar looks at the back super neat the facings inside finish it all very neatly super fun sewing techniques it's a super lovely design that i love to sew again the bust cup options are a plus and i think the fit is really good and i'm very happy I'm super satisfied with my make. I would definitely love to come back to this pattern and sew it with the front on the fold and the collar. I think that would be pretty. And also in a solid because I love the fit. It's really comfortable. I think it's really classic and having it in a solid could be a real good staple. I think it is definitely a pattern worth making again, for sure.
In the description box, you always find the link to the pattern I made. The brand doesn't have an affiliate program, so I'm making zero commission if you like this pattern down the line and you decide to get it. You know, I'm just making the video because it's a pattern I really enjoyed. There's zero financial gain for me from showing you this pattern. I just wanted to make that disclaimer. Some of the videos I make do have affiliate links, but there's also a lot that don't. So just wanted to let you know. I'll see you again tomorrow with another project that is perfect for those newer to sewing or if you just want to take a break and sew something cute. So I'll see you again very soon. Bye and happy sewing.